Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, August 21st, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, North and South Korea are on the brink of war as Kim Jong-un orders his troops to prepare for battle. Then, Black Lives Matter protesters invade North St. Louis after a criminal thug was shot dead by police for pointing his stolen gun at the officers while fleeing from a crack house. Protesters have responded by damaging property and beating up pedestrians. We're ready for war, is their battle cry. We're ready for war! Meanwhile, a new survey suggests that most African Americans don't support the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, you are the most violent motherfuckers I have ever seen in my life. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Today, a gunman opened fire on a high-speed train traveling from Amsterdam to Paris. He wounded three people before being subdued by two American passengers, according to officials. Now, the incident occurred just after, just about 6 p.m. near Arras in northern France. And according to an official with Police Union Alliance, the suspect is a 26-year-old Moroccan who was armed with an automatic rifle and a knife and was carrying at least 300 rounds of ammunition. The French interior minister said the American passengers were particularly courageous and showed great bravery in very difficult circumstances. Yes. Note to all you would-be terrorists out there, if you plan on attacking a train, don't choose the one with U.S. Marines on board, right? Now, uh, a report on Twitter said that it was three unarmed U.S. Marines that detained the gunman until emergency services arrived. French authorities are currently investigating the motive behind today's shooting, uh, but they're not ruling out terrorism. Now, on the other side of the world, we've got North Korea on the brink of war. And basically, it's a war over microphones. Now, this is uh, the North and South. They have been blaring propaganda, uh, opposing propaganda messages across each other's border. And so this microphone broadcast war resumed last week after South Korea blamed the North for landmine explosions that maimed two South Korean soldiers. North Korea denied the accusations and threatened to launch strikes on South Korean loudspeakers. So then South Korea has fired dozens of artillery rounds across the border. They're saying that North Korea um, fired first to back up the threat that they made to attack their loudspeakers. And North Korea says that the South Korean shells caused no injuries, but they denied firing. And now they're going to respond with fury. Kim Jong-un has issued an ultimatum in this loudspeaker propaganda uh, fight, and he has now ordered his troops to prepare for battle. And you can see pictures there where U.S. troops are mobilizing in South Korea, with officials saying that any war between North and South Korea could go nuclear. So South Korea has been given until 5 p.m. on Saturday night to dismantle their propaganda speakers. So those speakers are pretty huge, and obviously this is causing a lot of consternation. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out over the weekend. Now, Ferguson has also been in a perpetual state of unrest this past week. Protests there have been ongoing after officers uh, shot a black man. Ferguson, Missouri was up in flames and tear gas once again last night after residents demanded to know why officers fatally shot a black suspect. According to police, officers were preparing to execute a search warrant when two black males ran out the back door, both armed with weapons. After being ordered to drop their weapons, police said one of the suspects pointed his gun at officers. He was promptly shot and pronounced dead at the scene. Police said the suspect's gun was found to have been stolen, four guns total were recovered, as well as crack cocaine. Soon after the shooting, the street was full of nearly 100 residents demanding answers. Several arrests were reported. But where was the community response in Ferguson when nine-year-old Jamila Bolden was shot dead as she did her homework on Tuesday night? The Black Lives Matter crowd was nowhere to be found. The difference? Jamila Bolden was killed in a drive-by shooting and not by a white police officer. We try to be the protector, but this particular time I wasn't there. There needs to be a 
revaluation uh, of, of what human life, uh, uh, black, white, young, uh, the season, uh, whether it's in Ferguson or in areas that are considered affluent and afar off, uh, this has to stop, this epidemic of, of lost life for uh, under false pretense and of no real significant reason uh, has to change. Leanne McAdoo for Infowars.com. Black Lives Matter supporters continued their protests. They invaded the Central West End Restaurant District, district in St. Louis. The protesters were chanting, we're ready for war. They blocked traffic. Uh, they also jumped a young couple there. A man got beaten to a pulp. A Channel 5 photographer got his camera thrown on the ground. And the protesters were bashing out car lights. So this, to them, is democracy. They were saying, show them what democracy is. So it is this divisive behavior that's dividing the country on the message of the Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of people don't really understand what this is. And a, a recent Rasmussen poll is actually finding that just 31 percent of African-Americans actually identify with the term Black Lives Matter. Uh, 64 percent said the phrase all lives matter more closely resembled their views. And now a separate poll has also found that most Americans have an even more positive view of their local police and don't consider their tactics out of line. So this is this is the result of the divide and conquer message of this movement, the fact that they are only mobbing when an, a white officer attacks a black person. So you can see that that is the result of this divide and conquer message being pushed out by the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, it's actually discrediting real opposition to the genuine problem of police brutality. And it's exactly what we've been warning, uh, what we've said, was the agenda of the George Soroses there that are funding the Black Lives Matter movement um, to, to get this civil unrest going and to take the American people's anger off of the real issue of police brutality. Now, that's not just me saying that. Peggy Hubbard, who lives just across the river from St. Louis in Belleville, Illinois, is also slamming the Black Lives Matter movement for tearing up the communities in response to what she says is a thug being shot dead by police while ignoring the issue of a black on black, uh, the black on black violence that led to the death of a nine year old girl. Police officers went to those, uh, pretty much what they did was they went to execute a warrant for an arrest for a very, very bad guy. When they came to get him, instead of going peacefully, having his day in court, he decides to pull out another stolen gun, shoot at the police, police shot back, and he was killed. Within the same time frame, news broke out about a nine-year-old girl in Ferguson died in the drive-by shooting in her room doing her homework. She dies by a stray bullet to the chest. Last night, who do you think they protested for? The thug, the criminal, because they're hollering police brutality. Are you kidding me? Police brutality? How about black brutality? You black people, my black people, you are the most violent motherfuckers I have ever seen in my life. A little girl is dead. You say black lives matter, her life matter, her dreams matter, her future matter. And as we're watching the indicators for a potential Operation Garden Plot unfold, what about another race war that's kind of bubbling to the surface? Would Trump's immigration plan lead to a race war? Uh, his ideas on immigration have been gaining tr the most attention. Conservative Americans obviously tired of paying taxes on welfare benefits for people who have broken the law, tired of losing their jobs to foreigners, obviously, as you know, we're struggling here uh, to succeed on our own here in this country. Um, but what would Trump's policies entail? How do you think more than 11 million people might respond to <laughs> mass deportation? Obviously, that's not going to go over that well. It's a doomsday type scenario that would obviously um, plunge our country into martial law. So 
you know, that's obviously something that we've been warning about as well with the reason why all this civil unrest is being festered. Now we've got Pope Francis coming along, also encouraging people to illegally immigrate into the United States. He says if he has enough time, he wants to cross the border into the U.S. from Mexico uh, during his visit here. Um, he's also going to be meeting with uh, immigrants and Hispanic families following his address before Congress on September 24th. Um, and then he also said in June that Americans who are worried about illegal immigration and the financial burden that it imposes on taxpayers and institutions should seek God's forgiveness. Well, I've got some advice for anyone who wants to illegally immigrate somewhere. Go, go to Vatican City. I mean, they've got streets paved in gold there. If you want to have open arms, to people, just go there. That's what I say. You know, give them a taste of their own medicine. But obviously, American border, it's a ticking time bomb. And who cannot wait to sweep up the ashes? The American border is a ticking time bomb anticipating an economic collapse. According to the latest federal data, the U.S. Border Patrol has apprehended 3,138 more minors in 2015 attempting to enter the U.S. illegally than in 2014. This rush of foreigners impacts our laws, economy, and political landscape. The burden on the American taxpayer is enormous. But if an American wants to enter Tijuana, Mexico from San Diego at the San Isidro crossing, they must now show a passport and pay $20 for a six-month permit. U.S. pedestrians have always entered Mexico. Mexico unhindered until now. The new Mexican border security is intended to stop American criminals fleeing into Mexico. Meanwhile, U.S. ICE agents released over 30,000 criminal illegals onto the streets of America in 2014 alone. And the augmentation to record level human trafficking is staggering. Breitbart reports that illegals in Mission, Texas kidnapped other illegal aliens and held them at a stash house where they would demand ransom from their families, beating the illegals with baseball bats and keeping them in inhumane conditions. But how do you stop a billion dollar industry with ties to the big banks funding our representatives? For example, in March 2010, Wachovia settled the biggest action brought under the U.S. Bank Secrecy Act through the U.S. District Court in Miami. Now that the year's deferred prosecution has expired, the bank is in effect in the clear. It paid federal authorities $110 million in forfeiture for allowing transactions later proved to be connected to drug smuggling and incurred a $50 million fine for failing to monitor cash used to ship 22 tons of cocaine. And no individual was brought to justice. Meanwhile, the drug cartel fueled commercial banking industry lobbies senators and congressmen with millions. Notice the Democratic spike in donations in 2008 during President Obama's rise to the White House. Breitbart reports Dr. Ben Carson visited the Arizona-Mexico border. After Carson suggested drones and National Guard troops to secure the border, Arizona Sheriff Paul Babu explained it bluntly. We don't have drones ourselves. We have a couple of helicopters, and this is why there shouldn't be one county fighting the drug cartels. We had a $3 billion drug bus. We arrested 76 in one day. They were carrying 108 weapons, including AK-47s. Ben Carson mentioned absolutely use drones and maybe have the idea of a missile strike to blow up these cartel lookouts where they live in. Some members of the media were aghast he said such a thing. He said, look, we're fighting a war here. We should talk to military leaders and law enforcement leaders to see what we need to do. 17 to 30 percent of those caught already have a criminal record in the United States. So they're entering, so they've already been here, and they already have a criminal record established here in our country. Never mind their country of origin. Well, my suggestion is obviously we either keep them locked up uh, or do something that prevents them from going there and coming back. But hey, now the Holy Father Pope Francis is promoting the full-scale invasion of the United States, claiming he would attempt the crossing of Mexico to the U.S. if he had time. What Pope Francis might uncover is it's a lot easier than he thinks. John Baum for Infowars.com. Alex Jones here reporting from the road for Infowars.com. We've seen an incredible development in France today. CNN headline, official, two U.S. Marines stop Islamist attacker on train in France. 
this is one of those stories that illustrates just so many things for us. Now, the basics of what happened, two plainclothes Marines were on board the train and they saw an Islamicist from Morocco who'd been, been tracked by uh, French intelligence, they're now admitting, with connections to ISIS, pulling out an AK-47 out of his bag and loading it with a clip. They began to try to subdue him. Uh, they were both uh, injured, though they've survived. Uh, a French citizen was reportedly shot in the hand, and they were able to hold him down and subdue him until others were able to tackle him. If he would have been able, this coward, uh, to get the gun loaded to start firing, he could have killed hundreds because it's a speed train traveling for hundreds of miles for over an hour, not stopping. So he could have taken his time killing people and notice these, these, these mass shooters, whether they be Islamists or crazy Prozac heads, always target public schools, colleges, places where, where they know people are disarmed, uh, airports, you name it, which illustrates what the head of Interpol said a few years ago with the Nairobi, Kenya attacks. It's time to start arming the citizens to counter against this. But these Marines did what strangely didn't happen on 9-11. I think on planes full of people, folks pull out box cutters so people are going to fight them. I mean, I'm not Mr. Tough Guy, but I know I would. It'd be a default position. Uh, but that's a whole other separate issue. Uh, the French officials have called this uh, brave, daring. Uh, they've said that uh, they, have, they have admiration for what the Marines who were unarmed uh, did, but it showed what their training and initiative uh, you know, basically paid off. But expanding on this, this is the fourth attack in the last few months in France. We've seen an attack in Garland, Texas, uh, on the Draw uh, Prophet Muhammad cartoon uh, event. We've seen the attack on the two recruiting centers that killed five people, four Marines and one sailor. Uh, the shooter, of course, it was six total. Uh, the two Marines fought back with pistols. Uh, they got out of their cars, so they're being uh, court-martialed right now. They started the court-martials and they dare defend themselves. You cannot make this up. Uh, so it's just simply wild that our media then covered up that that was a jihadic attack Imagine if a patriot or a Tea Party person would have done something like this. It would have been the end of the world. Uh, so this is just an amazing event that has taken place in France. Here's part of the CNN report. A massacre on a high-speed train in France was prevented Friday when two U.S. Marines in civilian clothing surprised an Islamist militant. Senior European counterterrorism official told CNN. The suspect was loading his automatic Kalashnikov rifle in a toilet when the two Marines confronted him, the sources said. The gunman fired on the Marines with a handgun, the official said, wounding at least one of them. Now they're saying, I was listening to NPR just a minute ago, they were saying multiple woundings. Three people were injured uh, aboard the train traveling from Amsterdam to Paris, authorities said. The Marines overpowered the suspect who was placed under arrest when the train was uh, rerouted to the town of Ars, about 115 miles north of Paris. One of the Marines was wounded, the Pentagon said. The gunman, a Moroccan national, was on the radar screen of European counterterrorism agencies for his radical jihadist views. Yeah, they're probably letting him be recruited and be sent to fight for ISIS. Former top general, just last week, we played it this week, uh, of course, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency said, look, I followed orders to help basically you know, reconstitute ISIS in the Middle East because the West needs this proxy army to take over peaceful countries. Saudi Arabia uses this to conquer the area. They're our ally. Our government, other Western governments, are actually not calling this terrorism, whether it's Garland or whether it's uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, whether it's Texas, Tennessee, or France, because they don't want to point out that this is their own recruits coming home. Now, the government doesn't run these people. They just simply are allowing them to reconstitute, recruit, and raise money. And it's outrageous. And then when they attack us, they use that to take our freedoms. So the TSA wants to stick your daughter in a naked body scanner. I mean, it's all a sick joke. And now the Pope is coming to the United States on the 24th to lecture Congress, they announced today. Reuters reported, I covered it earlier on the show, to demand our borders be open to the Middle East, you name it. And I'm not against all the people in the Middle East. I'm against the radical jihadis that are being allowed to come in. This is outrageous and it's wrong. But good job of the Marines taking action. The disarmed French, it took them five days at the attack on Charlie Hebdo, the newspaper where they killed all those people and fired an RPG into it and the rest of it. And that got covered up because they didn't want to call it terrorism. They had RPGs in there. We first reported that later, came out in the news. Rocket propelled grenades. So 
that's what's happening. But notice because two Americans were there, people want to badmouth Americans all day. At least Americans will take action. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but at least we're not completely disarmed like everybody else but the Swiss. The Swiss have the lowest crime rate in Europe, probably in the world, the highest standard of living in the world, and they're more armed than we are. So guns aren't the problem. Criminals with guns are the problem. And that's what this illustrates yet again. This is a special report bulletin for InfoWars.com. We're posting this to YouTube as well. Get this video out everywhere. That American initiative and the will to fight back has now stood up to somebody that would have killed hundreds. That's what it comes down to. We're not going to lay on our bellies. The ruling establishment social engineers want a bunch of domesticated nanny state people that will put up with their tyranny. And that means that we can't stand up to thugs of any stripe whenever they show up on our shores. All right, that's it for this report. More articles at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Never forget, if you're listening or watching this transmission, you are the resistance. My guest today is Brandy Vaughn. She is a former pharmaceutical sales rep. She's also the founder of the Council for Vaccine Safety. So, Brandy, welcome to the show. Now, you actually, you, you've you worked in the industry. What was it that really kind of opened your eyes to make you a, an outspoken opponent of mandatory vaccinations? Well, originally I worked for Merck selling Vioxx. So that was the first incidents where I was exposed to really what's going on behind the scenes in the healthcare industry in the U.S. and really opened my eyes uh, to, to what we're being told is not actually always the truth. It's what they want us to hear and what they want us to, to think. So that experience really opened my eyes. And then I, I went to Europe for eight years and I saw how other countries do things very, very differently. And then I came back with my six-month-old son, who was unvaccinated at the time and or now as well, and uh, was bullied in a, a doctor's office. So that uh, started my research four years ago into vaccines. And I've learned really, really a lot of, a lot, a lot more than uh, most people um, have done, have, have researched. And um, I got involved with this in SB 277, which is the first mandatory vaccination for education law in uh, California that was passed back in June. And that's when I really started to to stand up and speak out against uh, mandatory vaccination and what's really driving the the, um, the push for mandatory vaccinations, which is clearly profit and not public health. Right. So that I mean, you think that is the truth behind this push, SB 277 and elsewhere. Uh, we've already kind of reported on some of the financial ties uh, that Senator Pan had there with the industry. But that's the truth. Yes, uh, there was a lot of money filled uh, filtered down into Democrats starting in 2008 when Obama became president. And this plan to start the whole mandatory vaccination push, those bills were, were waiting in the wings. And there were uh, precedent bills like AB 2109 in California as well. And one of the things that I think is most important, there, there are so much that I, that I want to say, but a lot of people who don't have children think, oh, well, you know, mandatory vaccinations for education, that's not something that really concerns me. And one thing I really think people need to understand is that this is just the first step. They actually have bills at a federal level um, and programs to immunize adult population as well. It's called the National Adult Immunization Plan, and it's 136 vaccine doses over the course of a lifetime, not including annual flu shot. So I really think that a lot of people have kind of turned a blind eye. Well, I don't have kids or my kids are older. This doesn't affect me. I'm not going to get involved. And what we really need to be saying is like, wow, we are giving up our medical rights right now. And first, it's going to be the children. And next, it's going to be us. And they're looking to implement it through um, through Obamacare, as well as through uh, health insurance. Oh, well, I'm sorry, um, through employers. So that is one of the things that about SB 277 that I really want to make clear. It's not just about the children. And another thing I want to make clear is that the vaccine schedule in the U.S. these days is nothing like when I was vaccinated in the 80s or previous times. The schedule has just increased substantially since um, since pharmaceutical companies uh, no longer have liability for injuries or deaths related to vaccines. And we have 53 coming out in February uh, 2016. The CDC recommended schedule will be 53 vaccine doses um, before school, which is age five. And this is two to three times higher than any other developed country. And yet what we're seeing in the U.S. is despite spending more on health care per capita, we have the sickest generation of children. We have the highest rates of infant mortality we have in the developed world. 
We have the highest rates of SIDS, highest rates of autoimmune disease, leukemia, uh, childhood di type 1 diabetes, food allergies, asthma, autism, developmental delays, ADHD. And what, instead of mandating vaccines, we really need to take a step back and say, why are our children so sick? And, you know, we're not seeing these epidemics of infectious disease happen in countries that do not have a schedule like ours. So this, this scare tactics that, oh, these diseases are going to come back, diseases that most of us, my age at least, had as children, chicken pox, measles, that are meant to build the immune system for things further down the line, you know, we're not seeing these humongous um, epidemics of infectious disease in other countries that don't have such an intense schedule. What we do have an epidemic in the U.S. is with our children's health. We have a generation of children that is sicker than their parents for the first time ever. And that is what we need to step back and say, wait a minute, what's going on here? What's really driving mandatory vaccinations? And if you look at the profit margins, um, vaccines have a higher profit margin than pharmaceutical drugs because they don't go undergo the same safety testing. So the rigorous gold standard safety testing and the years to market that normal pharmaceutical drugs go through, vaccines do not go through the same process. And plus, you couple that with the fact that there's no liability. So the vaccines are the only product in the U.S. you cannot sue for if you're injured. So it has complete federal blanket liability protection. So you put those things two together and you have a very broken vaccine system with companies that are making safety studies. They're funding the safety studies for the profit for the products that they sell. And there's no oversight and no regulation. And so we have a very broken system. And it's leading to just an increased and increased overinflated vaccine schedule. And we have really sick children. And there are a lot of studies that are not funded by the companies themselves, independent safety, um, independent scientific studies, peer reviewed by very reputable uh, university professors that show links with the additives in vaccines to these diseases that we're seeing in our population. Aluminum is a known neurotoxin. It's linked with Alzheimer's. It's linked with breast cancer. It's linked with neurotoxicity in vaccine-related doses. Same with formaldehyde is in every single childhood vaccine. It is a known human carcinogen. You can look it up on the FDA. Fetal and animal uh, DNA, why are these things allowed in into the bloodstreams of our bodies and of our children? Right. And well, and you, I, you've done extensive research with these vaccinations and, and, and as well as the toxins that are included in these vaccinations. And obviously, you know, you're very well spoken about this. You've worked in the industry. Um, so, yes, we are seeing record number of sicker children. You know, I, I, my nephews were sick the entire time they were going through their vaccine schedule. Um, but there's also this huge demonization campaign out there against parents who might, you know, maybe not even be anti-vax, but maybe they just want to slow down the schedule of vaccinations, uh, but demonization against people such as yourself. Talk to me a little bit about some of the backlash you've, you've faced. Wow. I've um, been called a, a child murderer. I've been told that I should be put in jail, that I should be killed and actually lynched and burned at the stake both wow. at the wow. same time. Um, I've been told that my child is uh, disease ridden. He's the healthiest child of, of all of his peers. He's off the chart in terms of weight and height. You know, I've been told really, really nasty things. And it's interesting because um, I think that you, you have first heard about me because there was some intimidation that I went underwent um, recently for speaking out against SB 277. I was organizing rallies and bringing in doctors and speaking against this uh, myself at multiple rallies and speeches against SB 277 in California. And I received a lot of intimidation, um, scare tactics. Um, my mail was stolen, my uh, car was broken into. And two days after a major rally in Sacramento, the last one I did, my home was broken into. Wow. I had, um, I had a home alarm, which I had installed a month before uh, based on some of the things that were happening. And they disarmed it wirelessly with my master code, which I had never given out to anyone. They picked uh, my front door very professionally. They were only in my place for five minutes. They didn't take anything because then a police report can't be filed if nothing's missing. Right. Um, but they did go down the hall. The sensor went off. The dining room window was open and shut for future access because that actually faces the backyard. And, you know, probably tapped. My phone has been bugged, my, my computers, my emails, all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And we're, we're, we've actually heard from some other people as well, also outspoken opponents on SB277 facing this same type of, of frightening scare tactic out there. Uh, we're also hearing about, you know, alternative doctors in the field being um, suicided mysteriously. Uh, just briefly, we've got about, you know, one more minute. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the Council for Vaccine Safety and where people can go for some more information. Great. So one of the things that I'm doing, I started a nonprofit um, because once you speak out about this, you're you're not really employable anywhere else. Um, I started a nonprofit and I'm dedicating all of my time to doing a public awareness and education campaigns, speaking out, um, doing media and all these things. It's you can find it at www.councilforvaccinesafety.org, councilforvaccinesafety.org. And uh, on there, you can you can learn more about um, what I've been doing and what what the new um, the new th projects we're doing in the future. And how to get involved. Well, thank you so much, Brandy, for speaking out. We really appreciate it. And like you said, it concerns all of us. So we appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Pope Francis is going to be encouraging people to illegally immigrate across the U.S.-Mexico border during his visit here in September. Now, he has also said that any American who has a problem with illegal immigrants needs to seek forgiveness. Now, earlier, Alex Jones did a report on this. Just what exactly is behind the elite's push to flood countries, not just America, but all over the world, with illegal immigrants? syndicated radio slash TV transmission, I broke down a detailed report on what I dubbed Operation Chaos, how all over the Western world, the elites are encouraging illegal populations to flood in with the promise of free welfare, free health care, have your babies for free, everything else. We talked about cities in California, like Huntington Park, that is appointing to key commissions illegal aliens to run major city departments who don't even have their credentials on top of the fact that they're breaking the law. This is sedition. This is treason by the ultra elite with the outnumbering giant third world populations. And if you look at the parallels with Rome, Caesars, Roman emperors later towards the decline, would actually bring in mercenary armies and mercenary worker groups to displace and control politically Romans. That ended up bringing down Rome. And now in Italy, in France, in the UK, in Greece especially, we showed you the New York Times article yesterday, uh, it is a full-scale, again, what was the term that was used? Full-scale disaster, the New York Times said, while they promote the policies of all this free welfare that helps cause this and not deporting the lion's share of these people. The world is collapsing. This is only going to get worse, but the globalists will always offer their solution, giving them more taxes, more power, more police state control, which they then don't even use to secure the borders, the wealth, and the sovereignty. We need the West to stay incredibly wealthy, powerful, innovative, and then transfer technology to the third world and build tourist destinations and economic development zone destinations inside third world nations to build them up. Now, that's the public promotion for 60 years of globalism. They said that, and it made sense, but they haven't delivered. Instead, it's about keeping them poor, it's about exploiting them, it's about deindustrializing them, it's about sowing destabilization. This has all been declassified. That's why they fund ISIS to run around the whole Middle East. And now, if Syria dares fight back against ISIS, that's being immigrated in by the globalists, they're going to bomb them starting next week. War has been declared against Syria unofficially. That just shows you the order out of chaos mentality. But Rob Dew was able to get footage, and so was I, of just hordes of illegals just sitting around doing nothing, collecting their welfare checks all over Rome. 
Uh, I was able to get a demonstration basically against the open borders and other issues and what's happening economically on tape as well. So we're going to roll some of that footage uh, here in a moment, and I'm going to be basically narrating over it. But I know you as a listener and a viewer already understand these basics. We've got to get the word out to other people that this isn't about being nice to the third world that we're doing this. This is being done to economically drive down wages. This is being done to make us poor, all of us, so we can be more politically managed. This is the admitted plan. And it's a revolution where you get the book thrown at you if you're a Hispanic American, a black American, a white American, an unhyphenated American. If you're an American, you get screwed over. You're known as a chump. But the illegals are above the law and can now be on the city council, just be appointed. It's wrong. It's discriminatory. And no one else puts up with this. Basically, our political immune system has been removed. America and the West has its shields completely down and are being subdivided, are having any original cultures erased and destroyed. So this whole plastic, artificial, matrix-like system of control can be overlaid over it. And that's really the story here. They say Rome is collapsing economically and falling apart and rotting outside the tourist areas. We've been out there and seen it for ourselves. It's not just Rome that's collapsing. It's all of America. It's all of Europe. It's all of the West because we've been sold out by political interests that want us poor, that want us dumb because they have diplomatic immunity. They have governmental and corporate reservations that are above the law and exempt from everything they're doing that are safe. And as long as the elites don't have to abide by the same laws, don't have to pay the same taxes, don't have to drink the same water, we're screwed. I mean, it's in the news for a decade that the Chinese elite, the German elite, the British elite, the U.S. elite, the Japanese elite don't take vaccines or they get special secret lots that are, quote, safe and clean. They don't drink fluoride water. They don't eat GMO. They have the secret gardens all over the world. It's even come out in mainstream news where, where, where they are producing for the Chinese elite and others clean food. The New World Order is like 100 Manhattan projects using our money, our ingenuity, compartmentalized to set up a whole new world for the establishment, uh, an Elysium for the demigods that they want to become. And then we get nothing only by admitting what's going on outside of the controlled matrix-like media, only by getting outside the bread and circuses of the modern circus maximuses and the modern coliseums. Only by getting outside of that will we regain our humanity and the mystery and the majesty that is the universe all around us. That's how we transcend these people, is realizing there's a whole world of mystery and a universe of mystery around us, but the globalists are no mystery. I mean, I talk about Manhattan projects, 100 plus thousand people involved for four or five years, kept it secret, no problem until they wanted to admit the A-bomb production out in New Mexico and other areas. I've known since I got on air 20 years ago, I was told by high-level pro-lifers and others and saw documents and lawsuits that were going on, how they were vivisecting and keeping babies alive and selling their parts. And, and now it's in the news. People say, oh, so what, kill babies? Well, you know what, so what, kill you? You know what, so what, harvest you? You know what, go ahead and kill veterans. Go ahead and kill old people. They'll kill you too, you dumb punks. You don't have any empathy and you don't demand standards. You don't stand up for other people getting screwed over. You're going to get screwed over. Everything the New World Order does is pure death. And it's not going to help the poor people fleeing, collapsing Middle East and fleeing, collapsing Africa and everywhere else. you got to fix the New World Order that's screwing these countries over. you got to stop globalism that's meant to create a cascade of global crises that bring in total world domination, a world cashless society, a total control grid. I'm going to throw it back to David Knight and the InfoWars crew doing a fabulous job in Austin, Texas. Uh, today, we're going out to talk about the Vatican, to research sites around Rome and the Vatican and bring you a lot of key info because the globalists are making their move. Obama calling for world government, the Pope calling for world government, carbon taxes. They've gone from this doesn't exist to the emerger point where they decloak to fire. We've always said for over a decade, and all the experts have agreed, that when they start admitting all this stuff out in the open while they denied it behind the scenes, we're in deep trouble. But it's an opportunity because finally, folks, we can say, see, we told you, we wrote books, we made films, exactly as we said now happening, here's the documents, don't live in denial, we can do something, we can say no, we can withdraw our consent, we can vote with our dollars. It's an epic time to be alive. And in my gut, I knew that traveling to Europe to investigate this for myself was key. 
uh, been here a long time ago, but hadn't been to this area in a long time other than the UK. We're here now. And I'm going to be traveling more, a few times a year at least, to Asia and to Africa and to Latin America so we can firsthand really get down in the weeds and break down exactly what's happening. So I'm about to go out. It's in the morning here. I'm about to go out, and we're just going to shoot tons of footage, interview people, see what we see. We've already run into demonstrations. We've already run into just all sorts of stuff. And this is what it's all about, true journalism, where we wear the truth on our sleeve, our bias to be honorable, where we're open about it, where we don't follow talking points. We follow history, our hearts, and the good conscience that the good Lord gave us. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com from Rome, Italy. Thank you for watching the show tonight. If